why don't we go through the ways of resolving these uh, dysfunctionalities? How do you create trust and how do you create, how do you manage uh, positively conflict? Right. So the, the, the most important thing we have to do around building trust is get people comfortable being vulnerable. And the leader has to go first. The leader has to be very honestly um, compelled to be honest about, or to be to be clear about who they are, what they're good at and what they're not good at. If the leader cannot acknowledge their, their weaknesses honestly, then it's not the rest of the team isn't going to do that. So the leader has to do that. But then what we do is we work with the team to understand who they are. And we use the Myers-Briggs and there's other tools out there like, what is your natural God-given personality? And how does that bear on the decision-making of the team? What are you good at? What are you not good at? And can you admit the things you're not good at? We talk also about their personal history, if you will, who they are and how they got where they got in their career. And when you watch an executive team in the course of two hours really lay out their, their personality defects and qualities and their, uh, their history, people start talking to each other in a different way. Um, so we do that to break them down, to get them to be humble enough to say, this is what I'm good at and this is what I'm not. And then we find out what does that have to do with their conflict style. Conflict is a function of your family, your culture, but your personality as well. And so we look at their conflict profile and then we force them to argue with one another about important things, not around personality, but around issues.